September edition of Why So Serious. This is Rory Cashin right here. That's Brogan here as well now. And that's Mary Burke behind the camera. Hello. We're going to be discussing the best three and the worst three films of September 2013. And at the very end of the show, the three films we're most excited about seeing in October 2013. Mm. So let's get started. Mm -hmm. Third best film from September 2013 was... Blue Jasmine. The latest Woody Allen movie starring Kate Blanchett, Alec Baldwin, Louis C.K., Sally Hawkins, Bobby Cannavale. Bobby Cannavale. Uh, uh, I said Did you? Yeah. Well, it needs to be said twice. Uh, a good bevy of actors. Mm. Uh, Kate Blanchett was happily married to Alec Baldwin in New York, but now is no longer living with him and she's poor and she's living with her sister in San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, and the film flits back and forth between the present um, day. today with her sister and the past with her ex-husband and it's kind of a comedy. Do you think <laughs> kind so? Kind of. Do you think so? Super dark comedy. I didn't really think it was that funny. We didn't see it together. Um, yeah, that's true. Um, I didn't really think it was that funny. I thought it was a complete tragedy. And there were times though when Jasmine starts making these decisions and you can see where it's going to lead her. And I actually wanted to grab her and shake her and just say, do you not see what you're doing? This yeah. is going to take you down the same path over and over again. But you know. well, What is that saying, like the, the difference between tragedy and comedy is timing mm. or the amount of time has passed? I forget, there's some really good saying but the, well, in there somewhere. I also think it's quite pertinent for Jasmine as a character. They say the um, definition of madness is to keep repeating the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. Mm -hmm. And I think that's quite clear in Jasmine. Yeah, uh, the film lives and dies by Blanchett Absolutely. and Sally Hawkins' performance. I think Sally Hawkins is going to get slightly overlooked because her character Kate. is not as fireworksy as Kate Blanchett's is. Mm. But Kate Blanchett is fantastic. Um, but I think without the two of them, the film, the script isn't all that great. It's kind of... No, for the master of dialogue, Woody Allen, it's not... Yeah. It's more about the performances, and, mm. which is odd for Woody Allen because normally it's more about the words that he gets the people to say. Yeah. Uh, but aside from that, it's still... Really, really good. It's going to be a major Oscar contender come next year, and I would give it an 8 out of 10. Um, I would agree with Roy's 8 out of 10, but also um, because of the work that Woody Allen has done, but also because of the touches of um, A Streetcar Named Desire, the Tennessee Williams play. So yeah, 8 out of 10. Our third worst is mm -hmm. actually slightly two different ones, yeah. so we're going to talk about them both really quickly because mm -hmm. of timing. Mm -hmm. uh, my third worst film of September was R.I.P.D. And my third worst film in September was The Call. R.I.P.D. is Ryan Reynolds and Jeff Bridges basically being men in black, but instead of aliens, they are ghosts. And it's meant to be an action comedy horror thriller, and it's not very good at action. It's not very funny. <laughs> not very thrilling. <laughs> not a lot of horror. Uh, Ryan Reynolds and, and Jeff Bridges have played these characters before in other films, but have played them well as opposed to mm. what they do in this film. Mm. Kevin Bacon's in there is the bad guy, not a great bad guy. Is there anything redeemable? Mary Louise Parker. Mary Louise Parker. I liked her. And it's very weird. I thought it was a really weird film. Mm. It's not boring. It's just but I don't think I was like it's like what it must be like to live inside Tim Burton's brain, but like in the future. It was very odd. I was never bored, but for the whole time I was like what? <laughs> the Call. Halle Berry plays a 911 um, centre operator and she gets a call from a girl who someone's broken into her house and she's kidnapped. And a year later she gets a call from another girl who's been kidnapped and thrown into the boot of her car and she, you know, has had so much trauma over the first case that she puts all of her effort into saving this girl, um, Abigail Breslin, from being uh, kidnapped and brutally killed. And it is a fine, it is a perfectly decent thriller for two thirds of it. And the final act of the film descends into the most laughable, ridiculous horror movie setup that you have ever seen in your life. Honestly, it felt like the script writer didn't know how to finish the film and just thought, okay, uh, basement, <laughs> chains, knives, wigs, let's do that. And some of the dialogue, oh my god. RIPD I would give 3 out of 10, mm. and The Call I would give 5 out of 10. See, I'd give it the exact opposite way around, I'd give RIPD 5 <laughs> out of 10, and I'd give The Call 3 out of 10. So, so this is why we had two in this category. The second best film of September 2013 mm -hmm. was... Do you want... Prisoners. 
Hugh Jackman and Terence Howard. It's on Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. They're like hanging out with their wives, Maria Bello and Viola Davis. Mm. Their two young daughters are outside playing, go missing. Uh, they call the police. Jake Gyllenhaal, Detective Loki, awful name, is assigned <laughs> to the case. Great name. <laughs> is assigned to the case. Uh, their initial investigation leads them to Paul Dano's character, who's mm, there's something not quite, not right, quite right about him. Yeah. Uh, but due to a lack of evidence, they have to let him go. Uh, Hugh Jackman's character is not happy about this, so he then kidnaps Paul Dano to attempt to get him to confess the location of their daughters. And if you think I'm giving anything away, that is the first half hour of a two and a half hour long film, so yeah. there's, I've given nothing away. And meanwhile, Jake Gyllenhaal, as the police detective who is investigating it carries on his own investigation so there's these two strands going on throughout the mm-hmm. whole film. One of the best films I've seen this year. Fantastic mm-hmm. performances from everyone involved. Mm-hmm. Uh, the script kept, keeps you guessing the whole way through. Gorgeous cinematography from Roger Deakins. Shocker. Hugh Jackman's third film this year and easily his best of those three. Mm-hmm. Um, it does start off a little bit wolverine that opening shot. You're just like, oh no, what's he going to do? But it very quickly reveals itself to be a very brutal drama. Mm-hmm. Um, Denis Villeneuve did the Oscar nominated film En Um mm. So he's been a talent to watch for a s- certain amount of time. He has another film coming out next year with Jake Gyllenhaal again. Yeah. So he's definitely one to keep an eye out for. Prisoners is not a brief film as Rory mentioned. It is two and a half hours long but it is definitely worth the investment of your time. because It, it doesn't is. feel like it's two and a half hours long. No. Well, unlike some Two and a half hour long films. Or films. some 90 minute films that yeah, feel that like three hours. Yeah. yeah, this just zips by because yeah. it constantly kept on edge. Yeah. Uh, 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10 for me too. So the second worst film of September 2013 is one that I haven't seen. No? No. Oh, good for you. <laughs> um, it's one of the worst examples I've ever seen of a film that should have been fantastic and so rapidly became a, a big pile of poo. It was Diana. Who's that lady? Who's that? Naomi Watts plays Diana, Diana. Princess Diana. Um, just as her relationship with Prince Charles is ending, who you never see on screen, and her relationship with your man from Lost. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember what his real name is. Naveen Andrews is the actor. Yeah, that guy she went out with. Yeah. Sorry, Dodie Alfie. No, not no, him. No, that's the other no. one. Oh, oh, I mean, you're talking about him. Um, yeah. Okay, never mind. I can't remember. Ha! <laughs> I can't remember his name either. See, that's, and it's the film's fault that I don't remember. Yeah. Because if it was a good film, I would have remembered. Should have been almost kind of a heartbreaking uh, romance set against the backdrop of inevitable tragedy. Instead, it comes across like the director of Showgirls tried to remake <laughs> Fatal Attraction. <laughs> With a little bit of Notting Hill in there. Oh my god! And she's like, I'm famous and no one loves me. And he's like, I'm just a normal person and I can't keep up with your fame. And she's like, ah! And she oh, like, dear. breaks into his apartment to clean it up because what? he's like, yeah, she, yeah, to clean up his apartment because he works too much and he can't clean his own apartment. And then she cleans it up and she draws like a love heart on his mirror and she kisses it. Now, if oh, I came home my and my god. initially messy apartment was cleaned and there was love kisses and stuff in the thing, I'd be like, yeah, please. No, pre- to be honest, princess. if I came home and my initially messy apartment was cleaned, I'd be like, great. And then you go in the bathroom and there's a love heart drawn on the mirror, you'd be like, Ugh. Mm. restraining order. I think a few years from now, this is going to be like Showgirls, almost, but it's going to be difficult because it's, it's about such a touchy subject, but it will possibly become a cult comedy classic mm. in the worst possible way. I do know that they took down a poster in Paris that was pretty much at the crash site where she died. Well, see, that's just like, a bad taste. Who, who didn't think about that? Who didn't realise that this was not a good idea? Seriously. Two out of ten. There's some really nice cinematography in there. That's and cool. Naomi Watts is actually kind of half good as, the, as Diana, but she's given just feck all to do and a really bad script. Our ah. favourite movie of September 2013 is also my favourite film of all of 2013 so far. So far. Yeah. Uh, about time. <laughs> First hour of this film, I did not. I had the biggest smile. It was just like, <gasps> and then for the last forty-five minutes, I did not stop crying. No, seriously. It was really, really affecting. Mm. I actually had to resist the urge to get up and run out of the cinema because it was so 
well done and so on the nose and everything else I wasn't actually sure that I could emotionally deal with it but I sat through it and cried and yeah. cried and cried and cried uh, Donald Gleeson is told by his dad Bill Murray that uh, as a 21 year old grandman he now possesses the genetic power to travel back in time to any previous point within his own life but only the men in the family can do it but only the men in the family can do it and when asked what it is he wants to do with his newfound power, he says he wants to get a girlfriend, which might seem a little narrow-minded, but it just all it does is show just how uh, romantic Donald Gleeson's character is. But also, he's twenty-one. Yeah, he's twenty-one like, and sort of soft and sweet and yeah. kind of yeah, I can forget that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like I was fine with that. I don't. I wasn't no, saying that. It was a yeah. negative thing. But he uses his power to um, kind of fall in love with Rachel McAdams's character. And he keeps like traveling back to make every single moment with her as perfect as he possibly can. And the film kind of deals with uh, the issues that some people might have in not living in the moment, uh, worrying yeah. about everything, of like letting life actually pass you by. And also, you know, over analyzing things that you've done and said in the past, I could have done this better, I could have said that better, I could have whatever. Yeah, and the whole kind of without the lows in life you, you've nothing to judge the highs against that's so true. Yeah. very like it might just seem like a normal rom-com and if you want to just go in and enjoy it at that level you most certainly can yeah but there's a, a lot deeper waters running there fantastic acting by everyone involved my favorite romantic comedies ever made yeah it's great uh, and i know like i'm not a big romantic comedy genre fan anyway mm. uh but i thought it was just fantastically made uh out of uh, 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 as well donald gleason is making fantastic choices keep it up donald good job Great job. So now, the worst movie of September 2013. <sighs> Have you seen this one? Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mm. Riddick. You less. Lee Bad. Do you not remember <laughs> that we were sitting together in this and just uh, wanting to kill ourselves and everyone Yeah, I think I blacked most of it out, so... From that, you mm. want to tell the viewers what this is about. Well, Riddick, for those of you who wouldn't know, is a sort of mercenary character who can see in the dark and he's got all of these enemies. And at the start of this film, he finds himself marooned on a desert planet and uh, has to find a way to get back to the civilization and reclaim what is rightfully his. I can't remember what that is, but it doesn't matter. Um, and more mercenaries come down and try and kill him, bounty hunters and stuff come mm -hmm. down and they're trying to kill him and basically it's just him snatching people up, killing them and throwing their bodies at his, their mates. It's... There's aliens there as well. And alien dogs. There's, alien there's, puppies. There's alien puppies. There's also just aliens yeah. there. Um, it's basically the plot of Pitch Black. From, written from the same writer, directed from the same director, starred the same actor. But somehow, they've completely forgotten everything that made Pitch Black good. Mm. Um, I'm going to give it a few years and go back and see if it's still as bad as I remember. And potentially, just like then, I see if it turns out as some kind of awful, tragic, but really funny comedic mess. Because I, so I did break out laughing at some point in this film. I was like, mm. what was everyone and anyone thinking? Mm, uh, really one out of ten. Zero out of ten for Jesus. me. So that was the best and worst of... September, September 2013, and uh, up next we have the three we're looking forward to seeing in October. You will see really quickly, really quickly, Captain Phillips, Paul Greengrass directs Tom Hanks in a true story about Somali pirates taking over American ship. Very tense, very claustrophobic, very good. Thor, The Dark World, the follow up, oh, well, it's <laughs> the follow up to Avengers Assemble and Thor, and it is basically just going to be a fight fest with Asgardian gods. What more do you want? And Chris Hemsworth. And Tom that's, Hiddleston. That's what, that's the more we want. Tom, Tom Hiddleston. And very last, enough said, uh, the last film starring James Gandolfini before he died, very sad, also starring uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus from Veep and Seinfeld. Don't know who directed it. Don't really know what it's about, but... It's about a woman... We don't, we don't have time. So they're the ones we'll refer to in October, and we can't wait for you to come back in October and see uh, what we said. And also, we'll be putting up details on Facebook and Twitter about our next Voice of Serious greeting at some point in the very near future. But until there's then, meetings that have to be had. We'll, we'll sort it out. Yeah, there's deeds. Yeah. But until then, that's been Mary. Hi. That's been Rory. In between these shots has been Brian, and that's been Brogan. And this has been Voice of Serious. September 2013. Thank you very much. <laughs>